Welcome to GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to determine the empirical and molecular formula given composition data. Now, if you haven't yet watched our previous lessons on determining percent composition and the difference in empirical and molecular formulas, I suggest you watch those first. And you'll also need a copy of the periodic table handy, which you can print out at the link here below on GetChemistryHelp.com. Now there's two ways that we can determine the empirical formula of a compound. The first way is we can use the data for just the pure mass of the elements that are present. The second way I'll show you is to use percent composition data. So let me show you an example first using the mass of elements. Let's say we have a 2.138 gram sample of copper and that was heated up to produce 2.407 grams of copper with oxygen, so some kind of copper oxide. What is the empirical formula? Well, the empirical formula, remember, is the simplest mole-to-mole -mole ratio of elements. So in our case, we're going to have some moles of copper, let's call it X, with some moles of oxygen, Y. So we want to figure out, is it 1 to 1? Is it 2 to 1? Is it 1 to 2? What is it? Well, I know that I originally had 2.138 grams of just copper. Then I burned it in the air and that combined with oxygen and gave me 2.407 grams of copper with oxygen. Okay, so I have 2.407 grams of our oxide. That's the copper plus the oxygen together. If I subtract the 2.138 grams of the copper we had initially, well, that'll tell me how many grams of oxygen we had. So there'd be 0 0.269 grams of oxygen. So that's the amount of oxygen that combined with the copper to give me the total oxide. Well, we know that the empirical formula is not the mass to mass ratio of grams to grams here. It's the mole to mole ratio. So I need to turn mass of copper into moles of copper and mass of oxygen into moles of oxygen. Well, how do we turn mass of copper and mass of oxygen into moles? Well, we know we can use the molar mass. So 2.138 grams of copper. I find the molar mass of copper on the periodic table, and it's 63.55. So there are 0 0.033. Three, six moles of copper. How about oxygen? Well, 0 0.269 grams of oxygen. The molar mass on the periodic table is 16.00 grams per mole oxygen. Grams cancels. And I got 0 0.0168 moles of oxygen. Well, obviously, this is not a whole number ratio. So the way we can find that is to do what's called writing a pseudo formula. So copper 0 0.0336. So I'll just use these moles. Oxygen 0 0.0168. Now I'm going to divide both of these by the smallest and hope that gives me a whole number. So divide them both by 0 0.0168. 0 0.0168. And that gives me Cu2O. So this would be the empirical formula of our copper oxide. So two coppers for every one oxygen, or two moles copper for every one mole oxygen. Now the way that we'll more commonly find empirical formula is given percent composition data. So let's just work an example here for acetylene. Acetylene is 92.2% carbon and 7.83% hydrogen. Now our first step is we're going to assume we have a 100 gram sample. And the reason that's nice is that if I assume these percentages are out of 100 grams, then these percentages become grams. So 92.2% carbon out of 100 grams means I have 92.2 grams of carbon. And 7.83% hydrogen out of 100 grams means I have 7.83 grams of hydrogen. Well, again, I don't want the mass to mass ratio for the empirical formula. I want the mole to mole ratio. So I convert mass to moles using our buddy molar mass. So carbon's molar mass is 
grams per mole carbon. Hydrogens is 1.01 .01 grams per mole hydrogen. So we'll multiply through here. That gives me 7.68 moles of carbon and 7.75 moles of hydrogen. Well, the next step is to write a pseudo formula using these moles. So I'm going to write carbon, 7.68, hydrogen, 7.75. Well, obviously, these are not a whole number ratio. So the next step says, well, we're going to divide them both by the smallest in an attempt to try to get the smallest whole number. So 7.68 is the smallest of the two. So I divide them both by 7.68. And see what that gives me. Well, I get carbon pretty much exactly one and hydrogen really close to one. So you'll find that if your moles are within a hundredth or two, it's pretty safe to go ahead and round off. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this one to one. So CH would be the empirical formula of acetylene. So acetylene has a one to one carbon to hydrogen mole ratio. Well, that's the empirical formula. Now, to find the molecular formula, we know it has to be some multiple of CH. So it could be just CH, or it could be twice CH, C2H2. It could be three times, C3H3. It could be five times, C5H5. Well, the way we figure out what that multiple is, is by being given the molar mass. So they tell me the molar mass is 26 grams per mole. This is the mass of the molecular formula. The molar mass is always the mass of the molecular formula. Well, this mass can be compared to the mass of the empirical formula, and if this mass is the same, then the empirical formula is the same. If this mass is twice, well, the molecular formula is twice the empirical formula. If this mass is five times, well, the molecular formula is five times the empirical formula. Okay, well, let's figure out what the mass of the empirical formula CH would be. Well, one carbon, those each weigh 12.01. .01, so that's 12.01 .01 total. We only got one hydrogen. Those each weigh 1.01, .01, .01, so that's 1.01. .01. So my total mass of the empirical formula is 13.02. So how does that compare to the mass of the molecular formula, or the molar mass? Well, let's just take 26 and divide it by 13.02. Oh, well, that's basically twice as big. So the molecular formula's mass was twice as big, which means the formula itself must be twice as big. So I take the empirical formula, multiply through by 2. So the molecular formula must be C2H2. So again, since the molecular formula mass was twice that of the empirical formula, the formula itself must be twice that of the empirical formula. Well, let's try another example here. So this problem says that a sample is 40.00% carbon, 6.713% hydrogen, and 53.28% oxygen, and the molar mass is approximately 180. So we want to know what is the empirical and molecular formulas? Well, step one was to assume all these percentages were out of 100 grams. So that means 40.00% carbon is 40.00 grams of carbon. That means 6.713% hydrogen is 6.713 grams of hydrogen. And 53.28% oxygen is 53.28 grams of oxygen. Well, the formula is not the mass to mass ratio, it's the mole to mole ratio. So we'll turn all of these into moles by dividing by their molar masses. So carbon's molar mass is 12.01 .01 grams per mole carbon. Hydrogen's molar mass is 1.01 .01 grams per mole hydrogen. And oxygens is 16.00 .00 grams per mole oxygen. So our masses cancel on all these. 
and I get 3.331 moles of carbon, 6.65 moles of hydrogen, and 3.330 moles of oxygen. Well, our next step we said was to write a pseudo formula. So carbon, 3.331, hydrogen, 6.65, oxygen, 3.330. Well, these don't look like whole numbers. So our next step to try to get us to whole numbers is to divide through by the smallest. So the smallest is this one, 3.330. So divide them all by 3.330. Divide by 3.330, divide by 3.330, and that basically comes out to be CH2O, one to two to one. Well again, this is our empirical formula. But we still don't know the molecular formula, but we know the molecular formula is some multiple of this. It could be this, or it could be two times this, three times this, five times this, etc. Well, the way we figure out that multiple is by comparing the mass of the empirical formula to the molar mass, which is the mass of the molecular formula. So what is the mass of this? Well, I gotta add up one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. So carbon is 12.01, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, oxygen is 16.00, so we add these all up. And the mass comes out to be 30.03. Well, how does that compare to the mass of the molecular formula? Well, we'll take 180, which is the mass of the molecular formula, and divide it by 30.03, the mass of the empirical formula. Well, that's basically six times. So since the mass of the molecular formula was six times, the formula itself is six times. So take CH2O, multiply that formula by six. So the molecular formula must be C6H12O6. So that would be the molecular formula. Okay, let's try one more example problem. What are the empirical and molecular formulas for vitamin C? Vitamin C is 40.92% carbon, 4.58% hydrogen, and 54.50% oxygen, with a molar mass of about 176 grams per mole. Well again, step one, we're gonna assume these percentages are all out of 100 grams, so that means I can write it as 40.92 grams of carbon, 4.58 grams of hydrogen, and 54.50 grams of oxygen. Now again, I don't want the mass to mass ratio for the formula, I want moles. So I need to turn all of these into moles. So find the molar mass in the periodic table, it's 12.01 for carbon. It's 1.01 .01 for hydrogen. And it's 16.00 grams per mole oxygen. So that gives me 3.407 moles of carbon. I get 4.53 moles of hydrogen, and I get 3.406 moles of oxygen. Well again, these aren't whole numbers, so I'm gonna write a pseudo formula, and then divide by the smallest. So C, 3.407, hydrogen, 4.53, oxygen, 3.406. So divide by the smallest, which is 3.406. And I get, let's see here. So divide through. And I get 
C H one point three three O. Huh, well I still don't have whole numbers. I've got one, one and a third, and one. So whenever you have a case like this, now we have to multiply by something else because it has to be the simplest whole number ratio. So this is basically one and a third, or four thirds. So what's the best way to get rid of that third? Well, I can multiply the whole thing through by three. And that would give me C three H four O three. So this would be my empirical formula. Now again, the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio. The molecular formula, which is this molar mass, is some multiple of that. So same thing, we need to figure out, is it this? Is the molecular formula twice this, three times this, what is it? So we add up the mass of this and compare it to the molar mass. So let's add up the mass of three carbons, four hydrogens, and three oxygens. So three carbons would give me 36.03. Four hydrogens would give me 4.04. .04. And three oxygens would give me 48.00. So add those all together and I get 80. 8.07, that's the mass of the empirical formula. Well again, how does that compare to the mass of the molecular formula? So I divide 176 by 88.07, and that's basically twice as big, which means the molecular formula must be twice the empirical formula. So take C3H4O3 and multiply it by two. So I would get C6H8O6. So that would be the molecular formula of vitamin C. Now there are only a few cases that you need to be aware of when it won't work out to be a whole number. A few cases are if one of the decimals winds up ending with 0.5, well that's basically a half. So we can multiply the whole formula by 2. If it comes out to be 0.33 or 0.67, that's a third or two thirds, so we multiply the whole formula by three. If it comes out to be 0.25 or 0.75, that's basically a fourth or three fourths, so multiply by four. And once in a while, you may even see one that comes out to be 0.2, which is a fifth, 0.4, two fifths, 0.6, which is three-fifths, or 0.8, which is four-fifths. So we're going to multiply through by five. Now in our next video, I'm going to work several more practice problems on using percent composition to find the empirical formula. So please come back and join us, and we'll see you back here at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.